Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the house of the Lord. It's great to be back with you today. I'm so glad that uh, God gives us times of rest and relaxation, and uh, summertime is a great time for that. My family and I had the wonderful opportunity to go to West Virginia and spend some time uh, recharging spiritually and otherwise, and I'm grateful to God for the many ways in which He always is there to strengthen us. He knows exactly what we need, and uh, I want to read you a scripture this morning. As I was looking at God's creation while I was on vacation, thinking about how awesome the Lord is. You know, we ask the Lord for things when we're in a situation, if we're going through uh, a time where we feel sorrow or sadness, or if we deal with pain, if we have some disease that we're uh, asking God and believing Him for a healing for. And uh, I was just thinking about how our God is so amazing in that He created everything out of nothing. And, uh, and yet sometimes it seems a bit odd that as God's creation, we can find it challenging to believe him for things that are so small compared to him creating everything out of nothing. You know, it's just the reality of it. And as I looked at the grand trees and the beauty of uh, the painted sky and, and all the wonderful things that God created, I think, wow, the handiwork of our God. You know, we say there's nothing too hard for God, and, and uh, we want to really believe that with all of our heart. And I just want to remind all of us today that no matter what you're going through, the Lord, He is so capable of taking whatever circumstance or situation and fixing it, and in the middle of the process, fixing your heart. And that was one thing that the Lord really reminded me of is that we go through challenges, but God's working on our heart all the time. And uh, so this morning, I want to read to you from Psalm chapter 33. It says, the Lord merely spoke, verse 6, and the heavens were created. He breathed the word and all the stars were born. He assigned the sea its boundaries and locked the oceans in vast reservoirs. Let the whole earth fear the Lord, and let everyone stand in awe of him. For when he spoke, the world began. It appeared at his command. That's the God that we're here to worship this morning, the God who holds the worlds in his hand. And uh, what a wonderful thing that as we worship him, his presence comes. And the scripture says in John chapter 14, 21, that he, when we demonstrate our love for him, that he shows up in a very special way. And I'm looking forward to that this morning. How about you? I'm looking forward to the presence of the Lord being here with us this morning. And so as we are led in worship, I want to encourage you today to participate and to magnify the Lord because he is worthy to be praised. And like that song says, that when we magnify Jesus, when we behold him, all of the troubles of this life somehow grow strangely dim in the light of his glory. And so may that happen for each one of us today. And may the presence of the Lord fill this place and touch you this morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to know you. We're thankful that there is nothing that's too hard for you. We're grateful, Lord, that we can come into your presence and we can worship you. And as we worship, that we create the throne on which you sit. And Lord, this morning, we pray that you indeed would inhabit the praises of your people and that you would be glorified and magnified. Lord, you know every single need that each one has in this place. And I'm so glad that you're able to meet them. But Lord, we also come to bless you today, not only to focus on what we need, but to focus on you this morning, for you are a God who deserves our worship, and we love you this morning, Lord. We offer our voices of praise and worship. We offer our hearts of surrender to you, and may your Holy Spirit come into this place. May you touch us and meet us, and may we, with our hearts, reach out to you. 
For as we hunger and thirst for you, we know that we will be filled. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you join me in standing as we worship the Lord and magnify his name together? Good morning, church family. What a beautiful day. I was just thinking, praise you, Jesus. Let's just say, thank you, Jesus. It's not raining, and the humidity is breaking, and we might be able to get outside without sweating. And you know, I don't know about you, but it's the little things in life that make me happy, and I just want to remember to give him the praise for that because I'm sure he had something to do with it. Amen? And this morning, you know, we were praying before service, and the Lord just keeps reminding me, that when we come into his house to worship and sing, that it's really important that whatever's on our mind, that we can just lay him at his feet. Just give him to him. And I can promise you that when you bless him with your praises and your worship, that he will bless you back. And so I just encourage you this morning, whatever you, know, you have on your mind, whatever kind of week you just had, or maybe this week coming up, you have some challenges ahead of you. He's going to take care of them. And so I just encourage you this morning to focus on him and not those things that are taking up that space in your mind this morning, but focus on him and I promise he will bless you for it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Feel free to clap, church. the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the King of glory, the King above all kings. Oh, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross. done for me. Worthy 
is the King. Sing, sing it again. Conquer the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered. Let's sing it together, church. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Can we sing the chorus together, church? Just as we believe it, just understanding and declaring the amazing grace of God this morning, okay? Sing it. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You laid down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus has sinned for All that you've done for me Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, God. Hallelujah. Love you, Jesus. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. Said, I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. Said, I want to see you. I want to see you. Let's sing it together. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. Said, I want to see you. I want to see you. See you high. To see you.
Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. For the Lord God Almighty.
presence of the Lord is in this place. We worship you this morning, Lord. We love you, Jesus. You have been so faithful. We've gone through seasons of life where it's been difficult, but you've never changed. And here we stand in this sanctuary this morning, men and women, boys and girls, whose lives have been transformed, touched, and sustained by your mighty hand. Others have written songs and we sing them. But from our own lips, God, we want you to know that you are worthy of our worship and we delight in praising you. God, I thank you for the ways that you have shown yourself to be a wonderful, loving Father who cares for us and that you are growing us even through the challenges, difficulties. We praise you for your Holy Spirit that is here among us today. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have in store to teach us. But we delight in what you have already revealed to us. We pray that we will live our lives in light of eternity. And that we will be faithful to fulfill the things that you have made clear that we're supposed to do. And I pray that as we walk in obedience to your word, that joy would fill our hearts. And I pray that your spirit would fill not just this sanctuary, but every single one of us, so that when we leave this place, that we, as temples of your spirit, will bring the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ to a lost and dying world that needs to be transformed. Jesus, I know that you desire to do a special work in Springfield and the entire Pioneer Valley area, and we desire for you to be able to use us to whatever capacity you desire. We want to be ready, prepared, and willing. And so, Spirit of God, continue to do your work in preparing us as we honor and magnify you and allow you to have your way. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. Hey, before you seated, would you take a few moments to say hello to one another? Leave your little zone, would you? And find a zone that you haven't spoken with someone in a little while and bless them in the name of the Lord. At this time, we're going to prepare our hearts to give to the Lord. I want to just share with you that as we collect this morning's tithes and offerings, really every time that we give is an opportunity to bless the Lord. The truth is, is that as you give funds, those funds are then uh, put into the account for the church. And, uh, and we have wonderful leadership here at the church overseen by uh, deacons and, uh, and myself. And decisions are made as we use the funds for the glory of God. Our heart's desire is that whatever God puts into our hands, that we will be good stewards of it. And ultimately, the truth is, not only for the leadership here at Christian Life Center, but every single um, church around the world, we will all give an account to God for how we use what God has provided to us. And I, I think that if some realize that, that they would be a little bit more careful with how they make sure they handle God's money. You see, the moment that it is given, it is really something that we give to the Lord. And we will be held accountable to the Lord for that. I'm always cognizant of that. As you give today, Sometimes it may be hard in the natural to connect the reality that you give of your tithe, you put it in the offering, and somehow God gets it. Well, the truth is, is that we as the church, the body of Christ, we are the Lord's. We are His workmanship, the Bible says. God is building this church for His glory. In fact, He's building every church that honors Him. And so as we give to the Lord... And those funds are used to keep the lights on, to cool this building down when it's hot outside, and all the necessary things. In the process of that, we're being good stewards of God's funds. And so, as you give today, know that you are giving to a place that values being good stewards of what God has given to us. And you can rest assured that those funds are used to the best of our ability for the glory of God. And we pray that the Lord will continue to allow this place to be a place not only that we'll be able to give locally to this body, but also as we support our missionaries. And I want to encourage you 
to remember your faith promise and giving to missions because that allows us to be able to bless missionaries every single month. They count on it. They need it. And we want to be able to be a faithful steward of what God has blessed us with. So as you give, God desires for us to be joyful givers. And I love to say it this way. If you can't give this morning with a smile on your heart, then keep your money in your wallet or on your card, in your bank account, because God is looking for those who give with joy. You see, God doesn't need your money as much as he needs your heart. So if you are withholding your heart and yet giving your money, don't waste God's time. Give your heart and your finances. And then you watch. The scripture says that's when he opens the windows of heaven and pours out a blessing that we cannot contain. If the ushers could please come forward. Would you prepare your hearts to give and let's ask the Lord to bless what we offer to him today. God, there are some in this room that have little. Others may have more. But regardless of what we have, we desire to be obedient to you. And we desire to have generous hearts. So I pray for each one who is obedient to give of the first fruits of what you have given them. And as they invest in other areas with offerings above and beyond the tithe, God, I ask that your blessing would be poured out upon each one to the degree that they are willing to follow the leading of your word and of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray that you would multiply the funds that are given today for the furtherance of your gospel in this local area and also as we support missionaries around the world. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you as you give this morning. I want to talk to all of us, myself included today, about something that affects us in everyday life and this is the area of being patient. Patient is a patience is a difficult thing uh, because patience presses us and it tests us. Patience is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. So patience is something that has to grow in every single one of us. The simple definition of patience is being willing to wait even when late. Being willing to wait even when late. And I think that can press us in many, uh, in many times, whether you're heading to work, maybe you got out a little bit later than you were supposed to, and then our, our natural tendency is to try to make up for that by either speeding or getting upset at the other person that is not in such a rush as we are. And God wants to transform us so that we are more like him. Now, we know that God has control of time. We see that, that God even made the sun stand still. Now, I think, I wonder what, what we would do if we actually had as much control as God does. Now, can you imagine that you failed to do something and all of a sudden you have within your power to make time stand still? I think that at times God reserves some abilities for us because he knows that we would misuse it. And I think that if many of us had the ability to affect time, we often would, as long as it would benefit us. But the truth is, it doesn't just affect us, it affects everybody else. You know, when we're in a traffic jam, oftentimes what we think about is not the hundreds and hundreds of cars that are stuck in a traffic jam, but who do we think about? Me, my vehicle, and how can I get around this? 
you know, while we were driving uh, on our way, um, I believe it was to our destination for vacation, we were in, stuck in this terrible traffic jam. And, uh, and coming uh, beside us, actually there were a couple instances where a couple motorcycles who could fit very well between the vehicles just helped themselves to zoom right on through and were not willing to wait. Putting their own lives at risk as well as the lives of those or the vehicles of those around them. And so impatience oftentimes can get us into trouble. So you and I must develop the ability to be willing to wait even when late. So God is at work in our lives. And I want to turn our attention uh, to Romans chapter 15. And it says this. It says in Romans chapter 15, Verse 4, the scriptures give us hope and encouragement as we wait patiently for God's promises to be fulfilled. May God, who gives this patience and encouragement, help you live in complete harmony with each other as is fitting for followers of Christ Jesus. Oftentimes, our level of patience is connected with our level of harmony. In other words, if you are impatient, it's not likely that you are going to be in harmony with those around you. Now, I don't know about you, but I've heard it said, and being a pastor with a family, I have experienced it myself, that some of the most testing moments can be on a Sunday morning getting ready for church of all times and of all situations. Getting ready to go to worship a patient God can test the living daylights out of us sometimes. And in the middle of that, God desires to transform. And so when we come into the presence of the Lord, sometimes we have a lack of patience because we do not realize what God prioritizes. You see, it's a matter of priority. I remember when I was uh, working uh, as a truck driver, and I remember the pressure was always on, uh, on, on my shoulders, because what the company would do is uh, they wouldn't route anything out for me, uh, they would simply give me a list of stops. Now, these stops could be anywhere from New York to New Hampshire, and uh, they would load the truck with all of the pallets in the truck. Now, when you're unloading the vehicle, you have to make sure that you're able to get to the stuff that's loaded in there. So you've got to stop at the stops in reverse order. Otherwise, if you stop at a stop and all of the stuff is in the back of the truck, there's no way you're going to get it out. So I remember I would get my uh, list of stops. Sometimes there would be up to 13 of them, and they would be sometimes separated by half an hour, an hour of a drive. And I would take a whole hour just mapping out where I needed to go for that day. And uh, I would deliver to Walmarts, Home Depots, all of the lawn and garden type of material. And I remember sometimes when I would get stuck in traffic because my truck would be full of stuff and they would oftentimes give me much more than I could ever deliver. And uh, kind of my last stop would have to be basically based on when the place closed. So I would always have to be thinking, I've got to get to this last stop by the time this place closes. And each stop along the way, and what was interesting is each place had their own hours. I would show up, say at 12 o'clock at a Walmart, and their loading time or their delivery time would not be during the hours of 12 to 1. So I would have made great time to get there, planning it all out, only to find out that I would have to sit and wait for a whole hour. And those times would have a test of my patience. Because in myself, I would think, you know, you have no idea what kind of route schedule I'm on here. If you understood how much pressure is on my shoulders, you'd help me get this stuff off this truck and help me to get on to the next stop. But that wasn't their job, and that wasn't their responsibility, and they needed to be able to take their own lunchtime. And 
See, what happens sometimes is, is when we're bearing a burden and things go out of our schedule, we all of a sudden want everybody else to change their schedule to meet ours. Why? Because that takes the pressure off. If only that one car in the right lane would move over because they're not turning right. I am. And if they knew that, they'd just get out of the way. When we try to have everybody else's schedule work around ours, we will live a life of frustration. And over the years, one thing God has taught me, and I'm still learning, is that when I'm sitting in a situation where I have to wait, I can allow patience, as it says in the book of James, to have its perfect work. So rather than focus on why am I not moving ahead faster, why is this person in front of me taking such a long time checking out, all of these things that can sometime rattle us, we can have a different attitude. Because one thing I've found is, is that I'm not the only one that feels in a rush. Everybody else around me. And then the cashier feels pressured because everybody wants to move faster and faster. And I tell you, when you learn to settle your spirit down and be patient, you can be a blessing to others that are constantly being bombarded with unreasonable expectations. The pace of life just keeps going faster and faster, and time is money. And if you're taking my time, you're taking my money. And it's just this attitude of constantly wanting to do more and more and more. And yet in the kingdom of God, God calls us to be patient, to tolerate delay without getting angry. And so how do we do that? Well, in Romans chapter 15 here, it tells us, it says in verse 5, may God listen to this, who gives this patience, help you live in complete harmony with each other. When you're feeling impatient, grinning and bearing it is not enough. You've got to tap into the source that's going to give you patience in the middle of the pressure. And so when you're dealing with that challenge, you have to turn to the one who gives you patience. And when you do, God is going to strengthen you to not only see what's going on at the moment, but what's happening over a longer period of time. The scripture tells us that one of the examples of patience that we have are farmers. Farmers who have to patiently wait, it says in James chapter 5, verse 7 patiently wait for the rains in the fall and the spring and eagerly look for the valuable harvest to ripen. There are many things that you and I do not have control over in life. For the farmer, can you imagine if the farmer somehow got a remote control to the clouds of heaven? Oh boy, that stock would rise quickly. Because if farmers could determine when it rained, it would affect so much. But farmers have no control over the rain. And there are so many things that you and I do not have control over. Now, for the farmer, that really hits home because that's their livelihood. Their income depends on whether or not that crop comes through. And if that crop fails, there goes their income. The pressure's on. But the farmer must be patient. You see, God sometimes withholds certain things to see whether we are willing to be patient. And here's the wonderful key that you and I need to remember. In the middle of our waiting, God is working. In the middle of our waiting, God is working. He's working on our character, but he's also working on things that we cannot see. God is a master of multitasking. God in heaven oversees and sustains the entire universe right now. The billions of people on this planet are sustained by the same breath of the Almighty God. Well, I can't imagine overseeing that many people and taking care of making sure 
that the birds receive their food and that God provides for the grass of the field and the flowers, all these things, and yet that's what God does every day over and over and over again. I love listening to the words of Jesus because when I hear Jesus speak, I hear the heart of God because he is God. You know, have you ever wondered to yourself, I wonder if I was able to ask God a question, what he would answer? Well, in so many ways, you're going to see those exact answers in Jesus' words. The more you read the word of God, the more you see the mind of God what he thinks about things, how he would answer a situation. And Jesus said, if your father cares about the birds and about the grass and the flowers, how much more will he not care for you? So all of us have our own ways that we make money. Money is needed, right? So in that making money, there's always areas where you can improve, aren't there? There's jobs you can add to your, your, your list of things you're doing, or you can work at uh, getting a better education so you can maybe get a raise or, or be able to have a different position. So there's many ways that you and I can potentially make more money, whether it's small or big. What happens sometimes is that we take on our shoulders the burden of our own provision simply because we have the ability to affect our income in some small ways. But you and I need to remember that every single thing we have is from God in the first place. In other words, you'd never be able to show up at your job if it weren't for the grace of God to give you the breath of life every single day. So yes, do your best. Apply yourself. But don't take all the pressure on your shoulders. It's too much for you to handle. That's not your responsibility. Trust God. Patience. Patience is very important. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 15 says, Patience can persuade a prince, and soft speech can break bones. Patience can persuade a prince, and soft speech can break bones. You see, sometimes what we are looking for is brute strength to get something done. And we think if we can kind of manhandle our way into a situation that we will get what we want. But if we are willing to compromise our level of patience, then we will have missed the most important part. It is God who gives us the stamina to be able to do what we need to do. There was this uh, gentleman uh, online, it was a video, and uh, for whatever reason, he, he has this super capability. And, uh, and so one of his strong points is, is that he can take very short iron bars and he can bend them. Uh, he can uh, take horseshoes and bend them. He can uh, do these strong feats. And uh, in addition, one of the things that he was uh, tested in was they have these traps that trap animals. And these animal traps are so strong when they snap, they actually break the bone of the animal when they snap. And so uh, this guy was saying that his hand, that he had strengthened it so much that he would be able to put it in the animal trap to set the trap off, and when it collapsed on his fingers, that it would not break them. And so that, you know, the little show, they're talking it up or whatever, and so then uh, the, this, this animal trap is on the table, and he takes his hand, and he literally puts his hand in, and he triggers uh, the, the trap, and it had showed what would happen to a normal animal's leg uh, when, it, uh, when it got in the trap, and it completely snapped it in two. And uh, so he takes his hand, and he puts his hand in there, and it snaps with the same exact force. The guy who was doing the, the video thing, he actually chose the trap to make sure that nothing was set up that wasn't uh, real, uh, true to what a trap would be like. And, uh, and it hits his fingers, and it did not break them. He held it there for a period of time, and 
you know, did not suffer significant damage. And so he was crediting that to his own muscle strength. That's what he thought it was. That he had worked out so much that his muscles were keeping his hand from being broken. So he went to the medical examiner's place and they did some tests on his hand. And as they ran through, they ran it through a very special machine that did like a 3D assessment of his bones and everything. And what they found, that the normal person has a certain level of porousness in their bones. But his bones were significantly higher in what they had inside the bones. So it was like the bone was super strong. It didn't have anything to do with his muscle strength. It was simply the fact that his bone was not so easily crushed. What happens, I believe, for you and I is at times we credit the wrong thing for success. There's that man who thought that because he had worked out his hand so much that he was able to withstand it and it had nothing to do with his working out at all. It had everything to do with the way that God had structured his bones. And that's why he could put his hand in the trap and it wouldn't break. Yours and my ability to withstand, withstand pressure in life is not us working it out ourselves. It's you opening yourself to the Spirit of God. And then the fruit of the Spirit of God, one of which is patience, fills us to the point where the world lays the trap for us. It goes off and our bone doesn't break. Not because of our own ability, but because of the power of the Holy Spirit. And here's the reality. The reality is, is that God wants all of us to be able to withstand the pressure of the world. And the scripture tells us that greater is he that is within us than he that is in the world. So, just like that man thought it was his working out that made it happen, but it had nothing to do with it. So, you and I at times can credit ourselves with making it through a difficult situation. I've seen people who have been through some rough stuff. And when they're through with it, they give the credit to themselves for being a strong person. And I understand where they're coming from because they made it through. But what they don't realize, if the grace of God had not been there, they for sure would not have made it through that. In fact, whatever they went through, there's something worse that would buckle them. Why? Because we're human. We're not superhuman. The toughest person on this planet has some Achilles heel. The truth is, our very life depends on him. See, so it doesn't matter what pressure you're going through. You cannot toughen up your own muscles strong enough to withstand the pressure of the world. What you need is the Spirit of God within you that's going to essentially fill out your bones so that when the pressure comes, it's not just you that the world's pressing against. It's pressing against the Spirit of God within you. And when the world presses against the Spirit of God within you, God's Spirit can handle it, even when you can't. So when you're pressed to the max, don't simply turn to self-help assessments. What that is, is that what do I need to do to help myself? You see, there are some things that you can do to try to help yourself. But the truth is, is that the Spirit of God is the one who's going to sustain you through every difficulty in your life. Patience may be difficult, but there is a benefit to patience. In fact, when you're patient, God can work through you to touch others in a very special way. In fact, in, uh, in the book of, of Titus, it says this, chapter 2, verse 2. Teach the older men 
to exercise self-control, to be worthy of respect, and to live wisely. They must have sound faith and be filled with love and patience. In fact, one, uh, one other portion of Scripture says that for someone to be a respected leader in the church, they must not have a short temper. And the truth is, is that when you have patience, you don't have a short temper. The Spirit of God is the only one who can sustain you with the proper level of patience to wait. When we think about examples of patience, one of the greatest examples is those who proclaim the word of the Lord, the prophets of old, who were willing to speak the word of God against all odds. When people who were hearing the message did not want to hear the message, but they patiently proclaimed. It's one thing when everybody's doing something for you to feel comfortable doing it. But when no one else is doing it, and you are faithful, that takes guts. This is one of my prayers for our church. That we will not be a church filled with believers who simply jump on bandwagons of doing things that are easy and comfortable for us. And the reason I pray that is because it is inevitable that this entire church body will go through testing. Because that's what refines us. I wish there were some other way. But the scripture tells us that the refining happens through uncomfortable situations. And the preparation for those difficult situations is now. You and I must be prepared now through the power of the Spirit of God so that when the challenge comes, we will be able to withstand. As you and I put our hope in the Lord, the power of His Spirit is going to give us what we need to stand up against the pressure of the world. Patience. It transforms us. And it blesses others. So sometimes you may find yourself in a situation where you're, you're walking with God, you're doing what you know to do, you're reading His Word, you're praying. Uh, you're faithful in the things that you know, but you still do not see some answers to your prayers yet. Well, as we read in Romans chapter 15, verse 4, it says, The scriptures give us hope and encouragement as we wait patiently for God's promises to be fulfilled. There are promises that God makes us that take time. God wants you to be steadfast and wait for the appointed time. Just as a, a farmer has to wait for the right time for his field to be able to yield the harvest. In a similar way, God is growing you, and you have to be willing to wait for the right time. So here's a few key points. Number one, be sure to do your part. Whatever God says to you, do it. It's very simple. Whatever God says to you, do it. Sometimes I, I'll use myself as an example, I have complicated things. And I have let my, my thoughts swirl about all kinds of stuff. Or what if this happens? Or what if this doesn't happen? What if this happens and then that happens? And all these kinds of, you know, scenarios. And the Holy Spirit has spoken to me and said, Joseph, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're allowing your mind to take journeys and you have no idea whether you're even going to get there. You're allowing worry and doubt to direct your state of mind. And at that moment, I've had to say, God, forgive me for even, it might seem innocent, just considering the pros and the cons, but even in that, I have found that I have had to repent and say, God, I must trust you. Because even if I listed it all, I still couldn't change anything anyways just be a little more frustrating to see how much I don't have control over the situation. But what the Lord has spoken to me is, if you're willing to trust me, 
Do your part. Do what I've asked you to do. And then the next part is trust God to do what he said he's going to do. It's very simple. God's always simple in the way he ministers to us. Do your part. See, if you're not doing your part, and then you're expecting God to do his, you're missing it. You're missing it, friends. And this is where God would lovingly rebuke you. And he would say, get it together by simply listening to me. Do what I've told you to do. And then believe me to see me fulfill what I have promised that I will do in your life. You see, a part of believing is putting feet to your faith. So, if you say, okay, God, I believe you're going to provide all of my needs, great point. But if that's where it ends, then you really don't believe. It's just a statement. It's a mental assent. But if I truly believe that, then when I'm in a jam, I'm going to react in a way that truly believes God is going to come through for me. God, you said you would. You said you would. And I'll be honest, there have been times I've had to ask myself, God, in this process, have I done everything you've asked me to do? Am I in this situation because of me walking a little bit off the path? Or is this where you have me right now just to trust you and be obedient? And I love God because when we seek him, we find him. That's what he says, isn't it? You see, This is a wonderful thing because sometimes we can worry about, am I doing everything right? Am I missing something? Friends, listen to this. If you open your heart to God and you ask him, he will tell you. He will tell you. If you're missing it, he will bring it to your mind. He's not going to withhold that. So what I've learned to do is more and more to trust that when I ask God the question, God, am I off target somehow? that if I don't hear his voice speak to me and say, yes, Joseph, you're off target right there, I have to trust that he is guiding and directing my steps and that I can rest in that fact and know that he will come through for me. I have to be patient. You have to be patient. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. In, In Psalm chapter 27, it says these words, wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. God is at work. God is doing things that we cannot see. We must trust him. First, we must do our part. Second, we must trust God to do his part. And thirdly, we must patiently wait for the result. You and I must patiently wait for the result. Don't give up. Luke chapter 18, once again, the words of Jesus. He tells a story about a widow who was speaking with an unjust judge. And the judge could care less about people, didn't care anything about God, and yet she kept coming back. And she kept pleading her case. Would you please, would you please do justice on my behalf? And finally, the judge said this, I could care less about God, and I sure don't care about people, but because you keep bugging me, I'm going to give you what you're asking for. This is Jesus telling this story. He says, how much more will not your heavenly Father hear your prayers when you ask? Now, either we believe that or we don't. And if we do, you can take it to the bank that when you bring something before God and you trust him, he is hearing you. He will come through for you. My friend, I'm not sure what you may have been asking God for for a long period of time. Don't give up. Don't give up. Some seeds take longer to grow to maturity than others. Trust God. He has not abandoned you. He is with you. And as you are patient, you will see a harvest. In the Old Testament, God's people, they saw his miracles. Water came out of a rock. Manna fell down from heaven in 
a perfect timing. They had everything they needed. They didn't have to uh, uh, work hard to put seeds in the ground and then, and then harvest uh, the wheat or whatever they would need to be able to make bread. God made it and provided it for them. Can you imagine? God did all the work. All they had to do was go pick it up and eat it. And yet they had something to complain about. And you know what the Bible says? It says that they tested God's patience. They tested God's patience. Now, we know God's very patient. It takes a lot to test God's patience, and that's exactly what they did. Let's be careful not to test God's patience. When we murmur and complain, and we always have something else we want, even though God gives us what we need, if we're like, oh, God, that I... I, I and we ignore the blessings of the Lord. We say, but God, that's not my preference. That's not my style. I don't want that. I want something else. I want something else. We test the patience of God. Now, the scripture says that no good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. So sometimes you may go without something that you desire for a period of time, but God knows what you need. And he'll even give you the desires of your heart. How many of you can testify to that? That even above and beyond your basic needs, God has kind of gone over and above sometimes. Hasn't he done that? I know for me, he sure has. And I'm so glad I didn't deserve it. I'm so grateful for it. God is patient with us. Let's be patient with each other. And as we are patient with each other, then the Spirit of God works harmony in our body. Listen to this in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. It says, we prove ourselves, verse 6, 2 Corinthians 6, 6, we prove ourselves by our purity, our understanding, our patience, our kindness, by the Holy Spirit within us, and by our sincere love. Then on to Galatians 5.22, a verse that many of you know very well. The Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. The Holy Spirit produces these things in our lives. Are you willing to allow him to produce that in you? Are you willing to wait even though you may not see everything you desire immediately. God is at work. Trust him. Believe him. And he will follow through on what he has promised you. When we trust the Lord, we must have patience and wait on him. It says, wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. If you could close yourself in with God for a few moments this, this morning, I want to encourage every one of us to think about an area that is testing our patience. I want you to think for a moment about it, this may be a person, and that's okay. Maybe someone pops right into your head. Someone that's testing your patience. Maybe it's a situation that's testing your patience. You've done everything you know, and it seems like no matter where you turn, you are stopped in your tracks. You try to make headway here, and there's a block. You try to turn to the other side, there's a block. It is testing your patience. I want you to get that in your mind right now. What is that thing, that person, situation that is testing your patience? Whoever that person is, whatever the situation is, it is a tool that God is using. He's at work. Don't let the work go to waste. Don't rebel under the pressure and say, I'm out of here. I'm done. Because if you leave that tool, 
God will find you with another tool. But if you're willing to surrender and say, God, I'm willing to wait on you. I've been asking for months. I've been asking for years. And I haven't seen it. By now, I thought for sure I'd be farther along than I am. I was sure hoping I would have seen more progress in the seeds that I've planted. It seems so slow. Here's God's word to you from Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Do not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season you will reap a harvest if you don't give up. God does not want you to give up this morning. God wants you to keep pressing in, to keep trusting him, Say, God, I know it's been a while, but I know that you are never late. You are always on time. I'm just going to keep believing. I am going to keep asking. I'm going to keep knocking. I'm going to keep seeking. For you said in your word that everyone who asks receives. Everyone who knocks, the door is opened. And everyone who seeks will find. I believe your word, and I will not allow the circumstances of my life to throw me into a state of chaos because it hasn't happened as quickly as I wish. God, I choose to wait on you. And while I wait, I will worship. I will praise you for what you're doing. And I will keep asking, and I will keep seeking your face. Because I know in your time, you will do it. You will do it. Maybe you're in the room this morning. And you need freedom. Freedom from guilt and shame. Maybe the sins of your past are weighing heavy upon you. Did you know this morning that Jesus paid for all that? Did you know that when he went to the cross, he went to nail all of that to that cross? And you don't need to carry that any longer. If the weight of your sin is weighing on your shoulders, you do not have to walk out of Christian Life Center this morning with the same weight as when you came in. Jesus said, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And that's God's word for you today. Don't take it lightly. Believe him. He will remove your burdens. And if you're here today and you're willing to allow him to do that, if you're willing to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, if you're willing to invite him in to come and transform you and make you a brand new person this morning, Today can be a wonderful new beginning for you. God says to you, today is the day of salvation. Don't wait because tomorrow's not guaranteed to any of us. And so my first call is this. If you're in this place this morning and you'd say, Pastor Joseph, I want to make that decision to surrender my life to Jesus. I want my name written in the book of life. Right where you are, would you simply stand to your feet? I would love to pray with you today. And the Spirit of God will transform you and give you a brand new spirit. I see you, my friend. God sees your heart. Is there anyone else in this place? You need to make that step today to follow Jesus. Going to church is not enough. Surrendering your life to Jesus is what matters. One last call. Is there anyone else this morning? The Spirit of God is calling you. And you're willing to say yes. If that's you, 
would you simply stand at this moment? My next call is for every single one of you. You're running this race, and it may not be going as fast as you'd like it to go. You've set some goals, and they seem just as far away now as they did when you set them. And you may feel discouraged. It's the Spirit of God that's going to give you patience to wait. Don't depend on your own abilities. Don't try in your own might to be patient enough. Without His help, you won't have what it takes. But by the power of His Spirit that gives patience, God can give you the stamina to stand firm under every bit of pressure that you go through. If you're in this room and you would say to the Lord, Lord, I need strength to not give up. I need your patience in my life for my family, my business, for the goals that you have put in my heart. I have not seen them come to pass yet, but I know that you are faithful. God, I believe your word. And I choose today to say, I trust you and I will not give up. If that is you in this place, if you're going through a difficult situation and you simply want to take a step of faith to say, I will not give up. I will trust the Lord. I will see that God will fulfill his plans for my life. No matter how I feel, no matter what's going on in my family or in my business, I choose to believe the promises of God if that's you. And Isaac, if you could prepare to play something as you're led of the Spirit, a song for us. I want to ask you this morning if you would simply leave where you're sitting and if you would come to these altars as a statement of faith to say, God, I'm willing to persevere. I'm willing to be patient no matter how long it takes. I trust you. If that's you, all across this congregation, this is the call to you to simply surrender the pace of your life to the Lord. You may feel like you're in a spiritual traffic jam, and God says to you, be patient. Be patient. I'm working out something good. I'm working out something real good. But you've got to trust me. Trust me. If the Spirit of the Lord has spoken to you, this is your invitation.